What is up, Jesus Church Hello, friends? Jesus Church. What's happening, man? Uh, it's yet again Sunday, my favorite day of the week, and I'm here with my beautiful, gorgeous, incredible wife. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks, and how? I am good. I am good because I'm standing right here next to you. But uh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, guys, welcome to another Sunday service. It's going to be amazing. God is just doing such amazing things mm. through Jesus Church, guys. Maybe if they cannot reach us, if they're not following us, where can they get us? Guys, please, can you follow us on our Instagram page, yeah. our Twitter, TikTok? We are literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you guys can just find us. It is at Jesus Church. At We Are Jesus Church. At We Are Jesus Church yeah. on all of our social media platforms. Yes, indeed. And listen, if you are interested in joining us for our physical service, it is right there down on the line. Yes, if you know, we have been just focusing this entire year, uh, focusing on prayer, focusing on the word, focusing on love, and it's just been incredible. So guys, we will see you at the end of this word. Prepare your space, prepare the atmosphere, clear the air, clear everything. Mm. There's a distraction around you and get ready for God to speak. Definitely. We love you. We're going to see you at the end of this. Enjoy the word. Peace. Peace. Hello, friends. Welcome to church. Thank you so much for joining us for another amazing service. I feel like saying like my good friend raps, I am Menelisi and I am your friend. I enjoy hearing you say that, uh, that line so much. It actually sounds cool to say, so I thought, let me say it for a change. But yes, I am your friend because this is Jesus Church and we're all about knowing Jesus and making friends. I'm sure you know that by now. It's really part of who we are at a heart and soul level. We are committed to really making disciples. You know, we've made that in simpler language and we're calling it making friends, which is the great commission to go out into the world and make friends. We're all about loving God and loving people. And we are committed to building genuine relationship that would outlast space and time. And not only that, so that people can know Jesus. That's why we're so serious about intimacy, building a relationship with God and prayer as a church. And I'm super excited to be part of this church that carry those things which are so dear to my heart as its vision and its mission. And I hope that you're also grateful to be part of this church and this journey that we're in of just knowing Jesus. You know, it's super exciting. And I couldn't do any, I mean, I don't think of anything better to do on this side of eternity except to have a meaningful relationship with Jesus. In fact, eternity starts when we have a relationship with Him. So super excited. We're starting a brand new series titled Focus on Faith. We just ended last month focusing on the word and what a wonderful message to follow up from last week's theme. I think they go very concurrently, very seamlessly, and I think it's a journey that we're all walking in and this month is going to be super amazing because I believe God is going to speak to each and every one of us and he's just going to stir up our faith, he's going to lift us up and he's going to take us to the place where he wants to take us in his purpose for our lives. So I'm super grateful. Uh, for this message. I'm super grateful to be the one to start uh, this sermon series. It's very close to my heart. The message of faith, I believe, is very relevant to where we are as a church because we are believing God for great things. I mean, we've seen a lot of growth uh, in the life of our church, spiritually, uh, financially, in our relationships, but we are believing God for far greater things than what we have yet and seen and heard of. So that's why this theme is so important for us. So put it down in the chat, focus on faith, but very much more particular, I want you to put today's topic, which is what I'm going to be talking about, is now faith. We're not talking about a tomorrow faith. We're talking about a now faith. And I believe while I'm preaching this message, there's going to be a stirring of a now faith inside of somebody a faith that cannot not, not, cannot wait any longer for a breakthrough for a miracle of what god has spoken in their lives and they have that bold tenacious faith that will not let go that says now lord now faith believe in god for something to happen now am i speaking to somebody today who's been holding on to a word and somebody saying this now faith is for me i'm believing god for a now faith and that's going to be my message today we're going to read in the book of Romans chapter number 10 to start off this journey. And I'm super excited. You know, when I was studying this word and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, preparing it, I, I began to feel those blood of in my stomach and I was getting super excited by myself. I'm like, I can't wait to share this, to share this with you. So I hope you've got your notebook ready. I hope you're super excited because it's going to be an amazing word that will change your life. Can I get an amen right there on the chat? Cool. Let's get right into it without any further delay. It says... So then faith eliminate the distinction. Number one, faith eliminate the distinction between the Jew and the non-Jews. Faith eliminates the distinction between the rich and the poor, the black 
and the white those who have and those who have not there is no he there is no she there is no difference in faith there is no distinction there is no difference there is just one there is just christ in me the hope of glory as he is so are we in this world in faith we are all like jesus the bible says the world does not know who we are but in a twinkle of an eye when he shall appear we shall be like him it shall be revealed who we are we all carry the identity of jesus it is only in faith where you lose men and you and you see god in faith it eliminates the distinction. It doesn't matter what your bank balance is. It doesn't matter what your political standard is. It doesn't matter where you are and where you were born. In faith, we are all the same. We are all as he is. We are seated with Christ in glory. It says, herein is your life in Colossians, hidden in Christ in God. Though I am seated on my couch at home, but I am so glad that I'm seated in him in glory. That's when. That's why when the disciples were glorious and happy that they are speaking and the demons are being cast out. Jesus says, do not take courage of this. Do not rejoice for this, but rather rejoice in the fact that your names have been written in the book of life. Why? Because in faith, there is no distinctions between the Jews and the non-Jews. Because before faith, the kingdom of God was only for the Jews. But now by faith, it is by grace that it is by faith. That's why we too, the Gentiles, have entered and are heirs of God. The Bible calls us the joint heirs with Christ, which means there is no difference. We enjoy the same inheritance. We are the adopted. And the Bible says the spirit of adoption cries in us, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's why when I pray, I say, Abba, Daddy, there's the spirit of God in me that connects with a deeper level of relationship with my God than the people who are Jews can even relate to. The people in the Old Testament could not say Abba Father they just knew him as God but in faith there is the spirit that cries out Abba Father and I am getting way beyond my message but that's the premise of what I'm saying is that faith eliminates any distinction there is no rich there is no poor there is no black there is no white there is no people who have and those who have not they are just those who are as he is amen and then it says and he has enough treasures to lavish generously upon all who call on him. The Bible says now, all of these Jews or non-Jews, there is enough treasure in him. Everything that should ever need, there is enough treasure in him by faith for all who call on him. That's why he says, and it is true. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be rescued and experience new life. The Bible says in the King James, those who call upon him shall be saved. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter how great your sin is. You may have been the deepest, been in the deepest pit of hell, in the deepest sin. But as soon as you call on him by faith, you shall be saved. And then, and then he asked, but how can people call on him, right? And uh, for help, if they have not yet believed. You cannot call unless you believe. You need to believe that he is there for you to begin to call on him, okay? So we know that to call, we need to believe. We need faith. And then he says, but how can they have faith? Oh, God. Now faith, now faith, now faith. Am I preaching to somebody tonight? It's going to be a great one. He says, and he says, now faith. He says, how can they call on him for help if they have not yet believed? And how can they believe in one they have not yet heard of? They need to hear. And how can they hear the message of life if there's no one to proclaim it? If there's nobody to preach, to preach what the message, what is the message? The message is the good news. What is the good news is that Jesus came who had no sin, who lived a life without sin and became sin on the cross so that we shall be saved. He died and he was risen and he's ascended to heaven and he's seated in the right hand of the father. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the salvation. And the Bible teaches us that Jesus in John chapter number one, in the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh. So what he's saying essentially is how can they believe if they have not heard the word? Which is now why you understand why we had to start with that message last month about talking to the word. Because it is after hearing the word when you can have faith. That's why these follow each other so 
as seamlessly. You hear the word, and after hearing the word, something must happen, and it's called faith. It says, how can they believe unless they've heard the word? So it starts with the word, but it must not end with us hearing the word. It must lead to faith. We proclaim the gospel of Jesus. We preach to people so that they can have faith in the word, the word being Jesus. Because the Bible teaches here that Jesus is the word. Okay. And then it says, now check out this in verse number 17. It says, now faith then is birth in a heart that respond to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. In the King James, it says, now faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith cometh. Faith occurs or faith is birth when you hear the word, the word of God. Now, if faith cometh by hearing the word, what, what does that mean? What is this faith we're talking about? Now, in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11, it says, now faith. It says, now faith. And I, I love how the King James writer chose those words quite, quite, quite properly. It says, now faith. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, now, present today, brings our hope into reality. What hope is he talking about? The hope of the word that we have heard. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's why in him we share in that glory. The Bible says now with open faces, we look as unto the mirror, the glory of God. And we are changed from glory to glory. Why? Because the now faith brings hope into, it brings our hopes into reality. The hope of glory. Remember, faith cometh by hearing the word. And the word is Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. And he says, and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. Oh God, oh God. The Bible says, if he gave you Christ Jesus, will he not freely give you everything else with him? He says, in him, he has all the spiritual riches in glory and becomes the foundations of everything needed to, for, sorry, everything needed to acquire the things we long for. Everything your heart is longing for is in him. The word that we preach, everything that you heard and desired, healing, prosperity, success, our, our wellness and wholeness and all the things you long for are in the word which are brought into coercion when faith is born in you by hearing of that word. Through Christ Jesus. Am I preaching to somebody today? Because even as I'm talking right now, the word in you, there is something that's being born in you, which is coming. The Bible says the faith cometh. You cannot manufacture faith. It only comes by hearing the word of God. If you, in other words, you don't have a faith problem. You have a word deficiency problem. The more word you get, the more faith you have. If you want faith, go into the word. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The more word you hear, the more enlightened you are. The more you begin to have faith in the things you are hearing about Christ Jesus. Am I preaching to somebody today? Mm. You know, I, I, could, I could go on forever, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and wrap it up. Now I'm going to try and wrap it up. It says, now faith brings up the hope into a reality. King James says, now faith is the evidence. Oh, sorry. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Of things of the, the substance. Faith is the substance. Wait a minute. The word, if I speak a word, you can't see it. The Bible says, uh, God spoke and there was. We saw what became, but you didn't see the word which made it be to become. So faith is something that is unseen. The evidence of it is seen by what it is produced. But then God wanted to make this thing real for mankind. Look at this. Look at this. Before I continue in the King James, it says in the, in the tr translation uh, version, it says, it is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Oof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I love the word of God. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. So when God, the Bible says, in the fullness of time, <laughs> Christ died for us in the fullness of time. When God, when God created mankind and everything had gone wrong, oh dear Lord, help me, Holy Spirit, to articulate this. 
and 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 God saw now he had to bring Jesus and he had spoken his word he had created the universe and the evidence the evidence was there right the evidence of all was seen was there the Bible says it is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen so the creation is proof that there's God, right? That the, the word who's Jesus Christ is proof. Myself, I am proof because I was created in his image. I can't see him, but I am the evidence because you cannot have the one. It's like a negative and a positive. The, the, if there's this, there has to be that. If there's a top, there has to be a down. So if there's something that is seen, there has to be something that is unseen. If there's light, there has to be darkness. If there's big, there has to be small. It's the laws of opposite. So what you can see is an evidence that there is something that is unseen. Oof, dear God. The fact that there is an earth is an evidence that there's something outside of an earth. Everything that's fact that there is time is evident that something outside of time called eternity because it's called the laws of opposites. So in that in itself, it teaches us a principle that faith is the evidence. It says it is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. I still do not see God. I still do not see love. But by the fruits, I have the proof, which is the faith that there's something called love, the gestures that you do, the gifts that you give, the hugs, the everything. It is an evidence. It's not the love. It is the evidence of what is still unseen. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Now faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. But then God said to himself, he says, now faith brings our hope into reality into reality the thing that is still unseen the word that is still unseen God said because they are stubborn because they are refusing to obey me because they have not they do not see me remember in the Old Testament when the the, 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 uh, the children of Israel God said he wanted to meet with them in the mountain they became terrified they said Moses go and speak to God on our behalf right and even to Saul they said to Saul sorry they said to Samuel Lord give us a king and Samuel was hurt because he says but God is your king so man has always wanted something between them and God and God has said no 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 they are missing the point of this it's this there's something deeper I want to have the relationship with them I want to come closer to them I don't want anything between so what he then did what he then did he Decided, sorry, my phone is going off here. What he did, then he decided that he's going to close the gap by sending, by sending the evidence of faith, which is the hope, the reality of what has been unseen. That happens in John 1. It says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And then it says, all things were made by him. And nothing was made without him. And then he says, and the word became flesh. And then the word became flesh, which means faith made what was unseen and untouchable a reality. It made the word of God a tangible reality. So all of a sudden we never knew how God was but we saw Jesus. We never knew what love was when we saw Jesus we know how love looks like when it walks, when it talks, when it thinks. The Bible says Jesus says I, I only do what I see my father do. Then we had an epitome of something that people could have never known through Jesus Christ. Guys there is nothing deeper than the miraculous wonder of the person of Jesus Christ sometimes we take it for granted that God subjected himself to a human body and confined himself to time and space and distance and became a living being in a person called Jesus that's why this is so powerful that the word was a reality of the faith which is the word what we hope for so everything that we long to be by faith, which is the word, is seen in Jesus. Wait a minute. He was the man without sin. By faith, we are the righteousness of God. He was the man who never got sick. By faith, by his stripes, we are healed. He was the head. He was everything that you pray for. Think about it. Everything that you have faith for, which is in the word, is epitomized in the person of Jesus. Ooh, I hope I'm preaching to somebody today. So Jesus is the epitome of the unseen, of the unseen word, of the unseen faith, of the glory of the things that are unseen. 
I want to read this again so you can get it. Now, faith brings our hope into reality. It is when we have faith that the hope can be a reality. Christ in me, the hope of glory. That hope can be a reality. That Jesus can be a living being who walks and talks and thinks. It is in faith. So that's why he says, and as many as believed in him were given the authority to be called the sons of God. As many, even though he was there, but not all believed, but as many as believed in him were given the power to be called the children of God. We're given authority to be called something that's above human understanding, human thinking, human limitations, the children of the Most High God, the same man who was walking on water, the same man who, who could tend um, five loaves of bread and two fishes to feed the, the multitude, the same man who calmed the storm, the same man, the same man who ever believed in him. It doesn't matter whether they were Jews or non-Jews were given the authority to be called the children of the most holy God. And then it says, when he went to his hometown, he did not do many miracles there because they did not believe in him. You see, the word is only as effective as the faith that comes from it. You can hear it, but if there's no faith that is birthed in you, that comes from it it will only be words that you will hear i'll preach i'll preach it will be another sermon series another sermon series another sunday another sunday but i pray to god that today something will be born in you and now faith that says christ in me the hope of glory i am the head and not the tail i am greater than my past i am righteousness of god i am too great to be struggling with sin i am called for greater things than, than these i am the god kind i am here for a higher purpose not just for material things and all these things no 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 I am called for greater things that can only happen if faith is resurrected in you by the word of God Jesus was only effective the word was only effective where there was faith attached to it faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God this message on itself could have been three parts but I really hope my my my, my prayer today as I was preparing this is that Holy Spirit stir up and now faith in your children. And I really hope that you, there's a faith that you're saying not tomorrow, but now. Not tomorrow. I'm, now I'm the righteous of God. Now my life is different. Now I'm changed. Now I shall never be the same again. No, I'm not going to wait for tomorrow to start my devotions. Now I'm going to start praying. Now I'm going to give my life to Jesus. Now I'm going to do something. Now. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. All the proof of the things that are still not yet seen is my faith. Even though people cannot see love, but by how I live, they will know there's a love. By how I live, they will know there's a kindness. By how I live, they'll know there's a generosity. By how I live, they will know there is a God. They may not see God, but man, if they can see me, they will know there's a God who exists. That's the type of faith I want us to have. A faith that brings revival. Jesus Church, I'm making a call on all of us to really, really seek God and pray for a regeneration of a change of life. A faith. The Bible says faith without works is dead. We want faith that works. We don't just want to be Christians in name only. We want to be Christians that live and talk and behave like Christians because we are Christians. We are. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. We are the glory of God. And I hope this does something for you in your spirit. I hope this challenges something in you. If there's anybody out there that just want to respond to this and say, Lord, I want to give my life to you. Why don't you just let us know right there on the chat. Uh, say, pray with me, pray with me, pray with me. We'll reach out to you. Reach out also on our social media line. We want to just journey with you if you want to give your life to you say i've heard the word the bible says how will they believe if they have not heard you have heard the word and you believe and you want salvation i want to pray with you right now 
it's my first group of people my second group of people you are saying i want to reconvert myself to jesus i want to renew my vows I've been a Christian, but a Christian in name only. But now I'm having a now faith. I want a new life. I do not want to live in my sin anymore. I don't want to live in my past. I don't want to be an average Christian. I don't want to be just another person that goes to church. I want a life where people can see God through me, the love of Christ in me, the power of the Holy Spirit, the authority of being a child of God in me. And that's you. Say, pray with me right there on the chat. I'm going to pray with you. We're going to pray. I, I may be far, but the Holy Spirit is right there. And I know that he'll touch you and he'll regenerate your life as you start with a now faith today. How, Abba, Abba Daddy, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I pray for each and every person right now, wherever they are, that's been feeling this faith coming in them, the now type of faith for a life that is changed, that is shifted. I prayed, Abba Daddy, that you transform them, that you change them, that you'll give them a new life, that from this day on, Lord, they shall be saved, that they'll live a new life. Holy Spirit, transform their thinking, transform their hearts, creating them a new and a clean heart. Lord, I pray that you forgive them for all they sin, erase everything from their past. And Lord, I pray for a new start. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they will walk and live and talk like you talk lord god i pray that you in them will be their hope for glory i pray lord god that you will transform them from one level of glory to another i pray for life change i pray for intimacy i pray for people with purpose i pray lord god that they from today onwards lord god they will follow you give everything that they have pray lord jesus for everybody that's part of this church to really really be sold us to this mission to loving you to knowing you and to making friends in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you are blessed. If you are, hey, make sure you share this with somebody. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Press the like button if you haven't. Share the link. Invite somebody to church next week. There is no reason why our services do not have tens and twenty and hundreds of people viewing them because week after week we build on nothing but the word of god and my 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 ambition is to preach the gospel and make sure that people know jesus and make friends so i want you to help me with this vision we can only go so far we need you to partner with us whatever it is that you can do send people messages on their whatsapp whatever it is share the gospel share the good news and next week i pray that we have more people joining in online we have more people attending in pretoria campus and we'll have more people continuing with this mission and having a now faith type of attitude and believing god for a new life god bless you have a great time as we are about to go for the offering god bless you hello friends i hope you guys are doing well i'm with the one the only mr kumasi ben yes sir yes, yes sir man. how are you doing my friend how are you doing good, good to good see you man eh? how's 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 you how's the, word? how's the word how's the word the word was fantastic yeah, i enjoyed it fantastic. very much how was it, was it? Oh uh, yeah, ne. So yeah, you, you you know that guy who. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, good to have you joining me today for offering. Um, he's one of the greatest friends that I have, and he's a blessing to my heart, to the church life as well. He's married to the the one and only, the beautiful lady. Oh, Noma Temba Sipeng. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, we, we're going to offering right. We're going to do offering right now. Um, I'm gonna read a scripture. Yep. And it's in the book of Matthew chapter 6. So the Bibles, we're going to start from verse 1. Right. I hope you all have your pens and you have, you're opening your Bible. Bibles, guys. Bibles. Bibles. Get, get a real Bible. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the Bible says, giving to the needy. Mm. The Bible says, brother, um, give, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen. You know, a lot of us, when, 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 when we do, listen, I'm, 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 it's a good thing, it's a great thing. When you give to a needy, you always want to come to a person, hey, <laughs> ticking, ticking, yeah. storm, you know, to just to show, it's a good thing. Hear me right, it's a good thing to do, to give to the people, but don't do it for you to be seen. Because what God does is, what God says is, when you, especially, I'm taking it back to the prayer, when you pray, shut the door behind you. Mm. Right. When you give, give secretly because it's between you and your heavenly father. And the Bible continues and says, my friend, I'm just going to read it down. Um, to be seen by them. If you do not, if you do, you'll not, you'll have no reward from your father who is in heaven. 
So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. Oh, I like this version. Mm. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you that they have received their, their reward in fully. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret ha, will reward you in secret. Oh, brother, no. this is a good word. What do you think about it? Oh man, it was a fantastic word. I feel, I feel like, you know, when the Bible says now that you must give you in said. secret, mm. it's, it's opening up the platform to say that now go back mm. and see whoever you can give to mm. But don't don't put it publicly yes, because sir. when you do it publicly, you're yes, doing sir. it to be seen. You're doing it so that people can praise you. Yes, so sir. it's not it's not a way of God that yes, we sir. should be boastful and yes, and need the praising yes, to ourselves. Yes, but we should give Come on in, in knowing that this I'm doing it from the bottom of Ooh. my heart and I do not need anyone to see it. As long as I see it, I'm just going to give to these people. It was a wonderful way. Yeah, so when good. you give open your heart towards i'm just giving i'm just giving yeah. i don't want anyone to praise me mm. i don't want anything i'm just giving and what i like about it is your reward is the praising of other people oh yes. that means that god hasn't praised and applauded what you've done because god applauds you when you do it in secret exactly mm. powerful power mm. friends let we don't want to get too deep into it we we just want to encourage you into giving let let what let let your left hand not see what your right hand is doing Definitely. right so friends if you'd like to give to the life of the church there are the banking details right there on the screen showing right now you can give via zepa code um qr code or you can um do an eft giving so that's how digital we are hallelujah amen praise the lord hey Glory to so Jesus. friends thank you very much for joining us we we hope that you've learned so much from the word and the great sermon series that we're doing. Uh, friends, thank you very much for joining us. We love you and stay blessed.